Hi, I'm Zhi Chao Wang. Let me introduce our paper Overparameterized Random Feature Regression with nearly orthogonal data. This is joint work with Yi Zhe Zhu. We consider the random feature regression model generated from this two layer neural network, F, at random initialization, where this W, the first layer weight matrix, has ID Gaussian entries. And here we consider capital X is a collection of all the data points. Here we have n samples, and capital N is the number of, of neurons for the first hidden layer, so the width of the neural network. And sigma is our nonlinear activation function, and theta is the second layer. So we can observe that if we just train the second layer for this neural network, it is a linear regression with respect to this random feature, sigma wx. And this is what we call a uh, random feature regression model. So in this work, we want to consider the following question. So what's the behavior for the random feature regression model when data x is deterministic and capital N, the width is much larger than the sample size, little n. So this regime is called over parameterized re regime since the number of parameters for theta is much larger than the sample size. And it has been studied a lot for several papers when this data x is also random. In this work, we want to consider um, the general assumption or the weakest assumption for this x um, so that we don't consider any specific distribution for x. So here we consider the random feature ridge regression with ridge parameter lambda. Then the predictor can be written in this way. So kn is actually just the empirical conjugate kernel, and it is a sample covariance matrix. Um, as I said before, we need to consider the overparameterized regime, where the n is much larger than the, the sample size. And it turns out, to understand this random feature regression model, in this case, we need to understand the, uh, the spectral property for this kn. Um, for instance, the concentration for this matrix kn, the least single, single value, and also the, this resolvent. In this overparameterized regime, it turns out this kernel matrix, this empirical kernel, is close to the expectation kernel, which is defined by this capital K. It is just taking the expectation with respect to the weight matrix. We can further expand this kernel using this nonlinear activation function um, as follows. So we consider uh, IID Gaussian weight matrix, and we, we assume that the data points are all unit vectors, and then we consider the Hermite uh, polynomial expansion for this nonlinear activation function. So here this is the Hermite coefficient, uh, zeta k. Then the expectation kernel k can be decomposed into this series. So here is this x transpose x Haramar k times it just entry-wise uh, case power for each entry of this x transpose x. So this expansion has been studied a lot in many papers, um, since uh, in this way we can simplify a lot for any um, unit vectors for x. You can observe that this xi transpose xj is just the cosine uh, of the angle between these two vectors. So if these data are quite orthogonal to each other, then this inner product is close to zero. Then taking a higher power make, uh, makes this off-diagonal term vanishing. So that's, that is something what, what we uh, expect. So as k increases, we want to say that this x transpose x Haramar k times is close to identity. It's kind of orthogonality, and we just want to choose the smallest integer so that this approximation work. So then we introduce this L orthonormal um, assumption. So we define that um, the L plus one Hardamar product for this x transpose x is close to identity with respect to this Frobenius norm. So we just choose the smallest integer L such, such that this uh, term is vanishing. 
So that is called the L orthonormal property. So using this assumption, then we can prove that this expectation kernel can be further approximated by this truncated polynomial uh, inner product kernel. So here we just take the first L um, degree of this Hermite expansion and then removing the other terms and replacing it by this identity with this um, Hermite coefficients. And for all for our theorems, we prove that if this data is L orthonormal and capital N the width is much larger than the sample size, then the random feature regression model um, based on this empirical kernel, this conjugate kernel, is close to the kernel ridge regression with respect to this polynomial kernel. And here this approximation is for the training error, cross-validation, and the uh, generalization error. We consider these three um, quantities to analyze. Uh, for the random data, so if we consider random data where each data point um, are sample from um, some specific distribution, then we can just consider a scaling to obtain this L orthonormal. So for each L, you just need to consider N sample size is proportional to the feature to the alpha power and adjust this alpha. So then you can uh, uh, realize any L, L orthonormal property. Previously in our work, we proved the case for L equals 3 for a specific um, determinist data set. And in this work, we extend our previous result to general L. And using um, this L polynomial kernel to approximate this original random feature ridge regression model, then we can get some property for this random feature regression model. So the main uh, method uh, to prove our theorems uh, is this normalized random kernel matrix concentration result. So we consider very general sigma such that uh, the width is much larger than the sample size. Then this normalized concentration for Kn and K uh, has a rate like square root little n over capital N. So first of all, this concentrated bound is independent with the norm of the x, the data, since we do this normalization inside this concentration. And it is very useful in this way, um, since it will guarantee some very sharp concentration result for the training and test errors later. And also, this one implies that the smallest eigenvalue for the Kn has a non-trivial lower bound with high probability. Okay, now we consider the training error approximation. So here we define the training error, the mean square loss for the random feature regression model, and the training loss for the kernel ridge regression model with the ridge parameter lambda. So then we can say that these two are close to each other as long as this uh, width is much larger than the sample size n. And with this rate, so this rate is like 1 over square root capital N. And later on we, in our simulation, we will show this rate would be sharp in some cases. So here, this kernel is just the expectation kernel with respect to this random feature. We can further approximate this expectation kernel by the polynomial kernel, right? So the KL, we can use this training arrow to approximate the training arrow for the kernel ridge regression. And this upper bound is just the definition for our L orthonormal property for X. So that's why this is also vanishing this L, this X satisfy, satisfying the L orthonormal property. Similar results, I also proved in our paper for the Li one out cross-validation and generalized cross-validation for this random feature and kernel ridge regression models. For the generalization error, we need to have some additional uh, assumptions. So we need to consider the target function is some um, single index model. So this f star is defined as this tau beta transpose x for some nonlinear function tau to be learned. And then the training labels are generated from this model with some Gaussian noise. 
we assume that this nonlinear integer model has an um, infinite many non zero uh, Hermite coefficient. And also for the test data point, it should be uh, something different from the training data point. So to be consistent, we just assume uh, the training data point and the test data point also satisfy this L orthonormal property. So then in this case, we can prove the, uh, the concentration or the approximation for this generalization error. So here we define this out of sam out of sample uh, generalization error as this one, and then we prove that this generalization error for random feature regression model is close to the kernel regression model as long as this capital N is much larger than the little one. So this bound would be sharp in some uh, deterministic data in our simulation. Furthermore, we can approximate this kernel regression by the polynomial kernel regression KL, so we defined before. Using that, uh, we can get the following uh, so-called polynomial approximation barrier. So let, let, let us just first define this projection. So this P larger than L is a projection onto the Hermite polynomial uh, spanned by the degree larger than or equals L plus 1. Then if we do this projection for our target function, so the tau we defined before, then the L2 norm square uh, is just the sum of the square of the Kermite coefficient for tau uh, with degree larger than or equals L plus 1. So as we mentioned, uh, we have this approximation from random feature regression with this polynomial kernel regression with degree L. So that means at most you can learn something with degree L. So there is no information for higher degree terms. So that means there is some lower bound for your generalization error for this random feature regression model, which is written by this projection. As long as your width is much larger than the sample size, then with high probability, then you have this lower bound. This tells us a uh, random feature regression model can only learn uh, a polynomial with degree at most L if this data is L orthonormal. This is only a lower bound uh, for a general data set. If you want to get some precise asymptotic result, then we need to have some additional uh, distribution assumption for the data set, which has been studied in many papers before. Comparing with this result, our a lower bound may not be sharp for these specific distributions, but it covers uh, very general uh, situations for even some real world data. And it would be sharp in these cases. Uh, here is a simulation we did for the CIFAR 10 data set. We just randomly select uh, N samples and D features for the CIFAR 10 data set and then do the random feature regression model we generated for this activation function sigma with degree 5 polynomial. Then we verify that in this case, we can use a polynomial kernel with degree L equals 2 to approximate. So here, this is a difference for the random feature regression model and this polynomial kernel regression. And you can see this difference is decaying with rates like one or square root capital N for different rich parameters. So this is for the training error difference and this is for the test error difference. So in this case, this rate is quite close to what we proved in the in previous results, this one or square root N. In conclusion, in this work, we consider the general distribution free data set satisfying this new concept L orthonormal property, and we prove that in this overparameterized regime, we can get some um, concentration result, and using that, we can approximate the random feature regression model using some corresponding uh, polynomial kernel regression model in terms of training errors, cross validation errors, and also the out of the sample generalization errors. For more details, please take a look at our paper. Thank you.